Those of us who love buses and house trucks know how many old vehicles are just sitting out there waiting to be shown some love. And today, we're about to visit a beautiful old Bedford bus that's been transformed back into a wonderful home. Hey Purple! Hey Bryce, how you doing? Good mate, nice to meet you! You too! This is such a cool looking bus. What kind of bus is it? An old Bedford, an SB3. So it's very old, it's older than me. And this is your home isn't it? You, how long have you called this bus home now? Uh, about 10 years now. Yeah, it's slowly been doing it up and making it more and more homely. It looks really cool. And <laughs> the location that you're in, this is quite a parking spot isn't it? It's beautiful, yeah, yeah, to be surrounded by nature and fresh air and clean water and sunshine. It's can't ask for more than that. I want to talk about the bus more in a minute, but yep. there's a lot of really cool stuff that you've got happening here on the exterior. Yes. Can you tell me about some of this stuff? Sure. Um, probably the first exploration into solar was this little solar oven. This one's metal and glass. So it's um, 90 on a good day, so you can put rice and veggies in at the start of the day and then at night it's all cooked and ready. And this one is a bit of an upgrade. These are two washing machine cases joined together, single glazed, double glazed. Catches the heat, it rises up and then at the back of that the heat comes into uh, a little oven with holes. <laughs> In it and then so hotter in here and then the heat falls down into the slower drying stuff for herbs i've got lemon verbena thyme white sage and that's all stored in the fridge <laughs> this is a little bit of white sage oh yeah that's lovely yeah i reluctantly throw things out if i can see another use for it I, I will put it into practice or i'll repair it or i'll get as many things from it as i can so i can reuse it i like seeing things repaired and reused and upcycled so this solar incense burner is one good example this is an old camera tripod these are two half magnets from a smart drive washing machine with a magnifying glass, an old tin and an old nut. And so I put some of my dried herbs, white sage, etc. in here. That clips on and I face it towards the sun and it smolders and creates an incense without having to light it or buy the packet or so it's traveled from that plant over there into my dryer to here with a couple of bits of rubbish to create a nice smell so kind of recycling and then what's this over here it looks like a kind of solar collector of some sort it is indeed a solar collector of uh, a reflective type so the sun comes in this is a parabolic mirror focuses the heat into this uh, metal tube these three here will heat that tank in a couple of days right and then it's really hot and will stay hot with the insulation and so this supplies hot water to the bus yep i piped it in when i got it to a stage where it was working well enough and um, as long as it doesn't rain for a week we're very good but yeah we've got gas for that and then you've got uh, an outdoor shower here as well, don't you? Yes, we can have a look at that. Yeah. There is the indoor shower, but I stopped using it. A, because the storage was kind of a premium in the bus. And B, it's lovely to be outside in nature. And so these, this is a peach tree. There's uh, an avocado up the top. <laughs> There's a couple of different sorts of mint. There's a sapote. We've got one, 
two shower heads and view. At night we've got stars and during the day, sun, water, spraying, you get rainbows. This is seriously cool. And I just love the way that you've built it really amongst the trees, eh? This is definitely the most natural outdoor shower I've ever seen. Nice, nice. I actually started with these old sticks and stuff and there were no trees and I planted the trees to hold up the structure when the sticks decomposed, which is about now. These are old curtains that uh, I've recycled and lasted really, really, really well. So you're growing a bit of food here as well? Yes, it's uh, the most nutritious, I reckon, to grow your own veggies. Uh, there's a mandarin tree we planted, custard apple, and various fruit trees along the perimeter that I've grown up from seed, uh, silver beet and various veggies. And then up at the bus, you're generating all of your electricity here with solar power, aren't you? Yes, you can see on top of the bus is one, two, three solar panels. Uh, the two on the right hook directly to the battery, charge them up, and the one on the left hooks directly to the fridge and some internal fans. So when the sun shines, the place is cooled and the fridge works and no sun, no cooling, which you don't need anyway because yeah. it's not hot. Well, should we have a look inside, see what you've done? Fantastic, good idea. The purple theme has definitely continued on the inside of this bus, <laughs> isn't it? There is a little bit of purple. There's just, just a little bit? Just a hint. Where does the love of purple come from? Uh, about 15 years ago or 20 years ago, just started liking the colour and it's not really an addiction, but uh, it's certainly been a, a, a consistent theme. I just really like the colour. And so people give me lots of purple stuff. They're like, oh, what am I going to do with this? Oh, I know who will like it because it's purple. So hence I inherit like uh, crazy little <laughs> Inflatable aliens, and aliens. <laughs> cushions and cushion covers and straws and kind of all sorts of useful or useless kind of things to make all sorts of interesting and other things go, which is fun. I really love how you've got the hammock set up here. Ah, it's the grand seat of the house. It has the great view, very relaxing. You can kind of hide in there a certain amount too. It's just big enough that you can wrap yourself up and have a wee snooze and disappear from the world for half an hour. And then up above you've got kind of a sleeping loft up here? Yep, this is the spare room and it's at the very other end of the bus from the other bed. So this kind of a sound isolation and gives you a bit of your own space. And then you've got your wood stove over here. Very important being in the South Island, right? Absolutely, this is Skippy and uh, it's got obviously enough room for two things. You can put the kettle in a pot or two pots or something. It suits the size of the bus and uh, heats the place up really well. For when it's an already a warm day, we have Tina. There's a gas ring, toaster and oven. There's cakes that have been baked and breakfast made, cups of tea. So we have park kitchen, park kitchen, a reasonable bench space. It doesn't matter how big your bench is, you'll always fill it and <laughs> want more bench space. So I think this is actually quite a good amount of space. And indeed, hot water from out in the solar collector and uh, gas, a gas caliphant for when we want hot water if it's been uh, cloudy for a week. Cupboards, that's the fridge that's powered by the uh, solar panel and storage plates, cups, and this is kind of one of the pantries that used to be a uh, shower. Is there a toilet here in the bus as well? No, I have got uh, a port -a so when I'm on the road then that's kind of easy peasy, otherwise uh, whatever's local. And uh, so on this side we have the extra pantry. Oh yeah, lots of stuff in there. And then this is your master bedroom. The master bedroom. So you've been living in this bus for quite a while now. Yeah, how, how are you finding the experience? It's really good. I don't really miss having big spaces. It's, uh, everything's nice and contained and uh, it's just easy. 
and relaxed, simple. Living in the bus, it's a great thing for being in touch with the natural world. So you have to come outside and experience the stars at night or, you know, it's cold or it's kind of mild or, you know, fresh in the morning, there's frost or there's, there's birds around the place. It's, it's sunny, it's cloudy, you know, rainy, it could be good. So it gives you a very direct contact with nature and the things around, which I really like. When I've lived in comfortable houses, I stay inside, oh, it's raining outside, I'll just stay inside and I miss out on the range of feeling and the great dynamicness of nature, which is precious. What was it that initially inspired you to move onto the bus? The bus was one of quite a few tiny homes, actually. There was a caravan and I built a small house in Mochaweka and so I've always quite liked that space. It keeps things minimal and so focused and so what's important. I guess it's a way of focusing life and intention. And you work as a musician and as an audio engineer, how do you find accommodating the profession because that takes up quite a lot of space and stuff doesn't it? It does. Luckily lots of other people have the gear so I can often take a skeleton amount usually a, a, like a computer and some microphones and go to their space where they've got all their equipment set up so that's easy. What did this cost you to achieve? The initial bus was gifted to me on the condition that I do it up and make it legal. So currently I've done it up. The next step is the legality and I've already done quite a lot of the things that a COF would require. Um, how much have I spent personally? Maybe a thousand or two. So not, not a great deal really, as far as homes go. No, definitely not. Being gifted a bus like this is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, great friend, great friend. He bought it. And it was like, this is a great project, I'm going to, you know, do it. And of course life kind of is busy and he just didn't get around to it. And when I came and visited him, helped him out, do all sorts of practical things. And I didn't have a home at that point. And so he says, well, you know, you've got time and you're handy. You do it up, you make it legal and I'll borrow it and, you know, go for a, a cruise. And I'm like, okay. And now you have this very cozy, very wonderful, very purple home. <laughs> that is, that is, that's, uh, no complaints at all. I love it. Purple, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful home with me. So welcome. What I love about this home is I think it's a great example of what can be achieved with not a lot of money, but a tremendous amount of creativity. Some of the really cool contraptions that he's built all over the place, as well as a lot of very clever modifications to that old bus, has really turned this into a very special place to call home.